This is module 30 of Mechanics of Materials part one. Today's learning outcome is to derive the strain transformation equations for the case of plane strain. And we talked about plane strain last time. Um, in general, with the plane strain condition, just like with plane stress where we could find sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, in general, for plane strain, we'll be able to measure and find epsilon x and epsilon y and uh, gamma xy. In fact, in later modules, we'll actually do that using something called strain rosettes. And once we find those, we can then uh, transform to uh, the, the normal stress and the shear stress for any uh, angle theta for, for normal and tangential coordinates. And so this is very similar to the type of, of transformation that we did with stresses or plane stress. Now we're doing the same thing for plane stress, strain. Uh, we're going to have a lot of math in here again in this module. The good news is with this video, you can go back and forth slowly to try to make sure you understand every step. I'll go rather quickly as we, as, as we step through it. So uh, here is our, 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 our block in the, our parallel pipe in the deformed position. We want to relate the strain in the X and Y coordinates to any coordinates N and T. And so here's our unrestrained parallel pipe. Here it is. Uh, after it's been deformed. Uh, we developed these relationships last time. Uh, now I'm going to also uh, look at what happens to this normal direction. So we start off with this uh, dn uh, along this diagonal and we see now that it goes and becomes stretched out longer and just like we did with dx and dy, uh, dn prime, the new length, is equal to dn plus epsilon sub n uh, dn or 1 plus epsilon n times dn. Uh, and remember now, uh, this angle here is going to be equal to uh, pi over 2 minus gamma 1 and gamma 2 or gamma xy. So this angle is pi over 2 minus gamma xy. Okay, so that's what our, 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 our deformed uh, parallel pipe looks like. Uh, here it is shown again, all together. This angle here, pi over 2 minus gamma xy, is this entire angle. And we can now uh, use math. We'll use what's called the law of cosines, which states is stated here. Uh, let's go ahead and call our a squared side of this. We're going to use this triangle here in the law of cosines. So this will be our A side. Um, we'll call this our B side and this our C side. And we'll call this angle phi. And for that ABC triangle, this is the law of cosines that applies. And when I do that, uh, this is the result I get. A is uh, this distance, dn prime, uh, or uh, we're going to square it now, so that's 1 plus epsilon sub n squared times dn squared equals uh, b squared, which is this side squared, okay, and then c squared, which is this side or the y side squared, minus 2 times b uh, and times c, uh, which we have here, uh, times cosine of phi. Okay, let's recall now a rectangular parallel pipe. Here's an x and y coordinate. Here's a rectangular parallel pipe. And you'll recall by geometry that this angle, and let's just call this generically alpha 1 and this alpha 2, uh, they have to add up to pi because the entire, uh, all the angles have to add up to 2 pi. And so um, we have alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equals pi. Let's relate that to our actual parallel pipe that we have here. So alpha 1 is the same as this angle pi over 2 minus uh, gamma xy. So we have pi over 2 minus gamma xy plus um, alpha 2 is the same as phi on our actual parallel pipe it equals pi. And so I can solve for phi which is equal to pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2 plus gamma xy. And let's go ahead and now put that value down into 
our equation. And when I do that, that's the result I get. And so here's the result I came up with. Uh, I'm going to use some more math, trig identities. Uh, this relationship holds true. And so therefore, I can change this last term to minus sine of gamma xy. And so also note for our original block that adjacent over hypotenuse, or dx over dn, is equal to cosine theta, or dx equals dn cosine theta. And d similarly for dy over dn sine theta, dy equals dn sine theta. Let's take all of those results now. So here's the relationship that we have developed along with dx and dy. We're going to go ahead and substitute those uh, in. And I have dx squared, dy squared, and dx times dy. I can now cancel dn squared out of every term, and I end up with this relationship. Another observation we can make is that the strains are very small. And so whenever we square the strains, they're going to be uh, much less than the strain itself, and so we can neglect those terms. Also, we can say for small strains, small uh, shear strains, that sine of gamma is approximately equal to gamma. And so here's a, 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 a strain term squared that we'll neglect, another one we'll neglect, another one we'll neglect. We have epsilon x times sine of gamma xy, which is about gamma xy, so you have epsilon times gamma, very small strain, we'll cancel that term. We'll cancel that term as well, and finally we'll ca cancel this term. And when we do that, uh, we also can say that sine of gamma xy is equal to gamma xy. This is the result we arrive at. And so here's that result uh, shown again. Uh, we see that we have a sine, I've rearranged it so that I have combined terms. I have a sine squared plus a cosine squared, which is equal to 1. So 1 cancels with 1. I can cancel 2 in every one of my terms. And I end up with now, finally, the normal strain transformation equation. And it looks like this. Uh, we can also use trig identities to express it in a little bit different form that looks like this. And when I do that and put those trig identities in, this is the result. So I finally now, going through the math and the geometry, I have strain transformation equations that take my plane strain known for EX, or no, I know the strains in the XY and the gamma XY shear strain. I can now transform them for any normal and tangential coordinates at any angle theta. And this is the normal strain transformation equation, completely analogous to the uh, stress transformation equations we came up for the case of plane stress, and this is what they look like.